Hello there everybody and welcome back to Teaching Tips with Sally. And I think it wants me to do something so I'm just going to get rid of that. Sorry, something's just popped up on my page. There we go. Welcome back. So, I've been away for a couple of weeks and during those couple of weeks I've moved house. And here I am in my new house which is up in North Yorkshire. You can see we're still getting settled in so things are still wrapped up but I have got my piano here and um, and I am teaching online so all is good if a little messy but then that's my nature. I just thought I'd come in today though to talk about a couple of quite um, easy simple ideas for teaching beginners um, during lessons this Christmas. It is quite hard isn't it when you've had beginners started in September and you know, you know, Christmas is coming up, and <gasps> they want to play something. And of course, what they what do they usually want to play? They can usually manage that bit. <laughs> usually, just about the first two bars. The rest of it, some of them get, but it is quite a complicated piece because of all the repeated notes that they have to play. So um, it doesn't always work. I find. So here's a couple of other ideas. Actually, it's mostly one idea, I must admit, but it's got another idea um, involved in it. And that is to use what I use, what I call sound stories. And sound stories are just very, very simply taking a lovely picture storybook and creating a, um, a, a musical pictures through it, creating musical stories. And I've done this with a lot of beginners in the past and in the, if you're a curious piano teacher, you'll find that there are workbooks to help you do this with two or three storybooks, but you can take any one that you've got, your favorite Christmas storybook. The one I'm gonna show you today is a, a, a lovely book by a fantastic author called Petra Horacek, and it's called A Susie Goose and the Christmas Star. And it's, it is really a lovely book and it's published by Walker Books. So thank you to Walker Books for um, publishing this and letting me use this as a basis for a sound story. And it's all about just taking whatever is in the book and bring it to life musically. So it's like all story books, beautifully illustrated. And for example, it has a Christmas tree there and there was one thing missing and that was um, a star on the top. Now, this is immediately, for me, a beautiful opportunity to get kids to play a song that they usually can play, which is twinkle. They can certainly sing it. And, um, of course, it has lots of um, Mozart connections as well. And I created, actually, for my Ready to Play, and I might even share it here in, in the post later on, so look out for it, um, a, a, a Ready to Play song thing here. So you can get them to sing the song, play along with it, twinkle, twinkle, little star, etc, etc. And they love doing that. They love playing songs that they know and it, usually they can manage to play it. And then on the next page, Susie goes and dives off the hill and then we've got this lovely illustration. That's why she's going on to the next one as well, where she goes way all the way down and all the way back up. Well, what a fantastic opportunity to use the whole piano. Get your pupils with something nice and soft. I wouldn't get them to do it with their hands, but give them something nice and soft. I've just got a, a, a table napkin here. And I would probably get them to do it standing up, to be honest, because I want them to use their whole body to go. Sue, so it says that she slid down really, really fast. There we go. And flew high up in the sky. And maybe, like I did then, I went down on the whites and back on the black notes. That was quite fun. And because they're doing it with that, then um, they don't hurt themselves. And of course, the other beauty of this is that it's helping them with their whole body. So if you're somebody who's teaching in a very, in quite a fixed position with your beginners, then actually you need to get them up and you need to get them using this whole body. That's the first thing that we need to do as pianists, use the whole body to play. And this really does, gets their arm moving look all the way from my shoulder. So you can be having lots of fun, engaging them, motivating them and developing good technique as well. And then um, what happens next, so I'm not gonna go through it page by page, but she sees a fence, she climbs on top, so you can make some climbing up music. She stretches up and then she jumps very high 
and she doesn't quite go high enough, of course, to reach the star because she thinks she's going to get the star and she goes splat. <laughs> Why not? Let's go splat on the piano. And then she does the same again with some logs this time and again she goes splat and all the time you can see this star like this. I have to say, I was looking out my bedroom window, my new bedroom window, and last night at dusk, and there were these two beautiful stars that I could see in the sky. It was just wonderful. Um, anyhow, getting distracted there. Um, and she, she keeps going. She keeps thinking, I'm going to get to this star. She keeps walking and walking and walking, and she says eventually it's Christmas Eve, and I'm never going to reach the star. And of course, the snow starts to come in, and she begins to feel very alone, very lost, beautiful kind of white page here um, and what a lovely opportunity to do some improvising um, and you can set the scene maybe something I would automatically go for A minor-ish but and seconds to get that sort of quiet reflective quality and you might talk about how you're going to make that music to feel very uh, alone and lost maybe space the notes out even more. You know, just get the pupil to join in. It can be anywhere you like, maybe just using those seconds of exploring around the piano. Make some very beautiful music. Stick the pedal down. Get them to put the pedal down. Why not? Um, and then in, in the end, it all turns out okay. She doesn't reach the star, but she does get back to her friends and she realises when she's staring up in the sky that, oh, wondrous, the Christmas tree and the star have come into alignment. Or actually, it's the star that's come into alignment. That's just one example of a sound story. They are so much fun to do with younger beginners because they just feel as though they are in just being a musician, which is what we want them to feel. Parents love it. We'll often record a performance of the child with, with my help so that they can then send it to grandparents. And all of a sudden, the magic of music at Christmas, of sharing and um, motivating people, comes even with your younger beginners. So the sound story I've used was called Susie Goose and the Christmas Star by Peter Horacek. But actually, you can choose any Christmas piece and just use your imagination. Look at for high sounds, look for low sounds, look for the pictures, look for something that you can, you know, um, tag an image onto. It's lots of fun and absolutely worthwhile as a musical activity. Lovely to see you all again. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back next week on Wednesday next week. Okay, bye for now.